Well, how's things? Yeah, they good. Uh, how about with you? We, we premiered the film a few weeks ago and went really well, so I'm feeling really good and watching lots of films, and you know, it's really good. That's great. In fact, this is my first interview about the short film. Let's get into it. Um, yeah. You get straight into it. There's something so haunting about it. Mm. Uh, it's so impressive. Oh, thank you, Myra. What made you kind of choose the subject of mental health? Um, I think that I just wrote the film at a time where I was struggling with my mental health. And um, where I think writing short films can be tricky because I think it's really important to give yourself a set of parameters where you can write something that's achievable. So I wanted to write something that was contained and that I felt would stretch me as a filmmaker. And one of my heroes, Paul Thomas Anderson, directed a short film called Cigarettes and Coffee, which is essentially just two people in a diner having a conversation over a coffee. And mm -hmm. that film evolved into Hard Eight. And um, I think I went into it with the mindset of, I want to write a scene between two characters in an attempt to stretch myself as a filmmaker and director with uh, directing actors. Um, and yeah, just um, the, the the theme of mental health was quite prescient and, and personally topical to me at the time. So that's sort of where it came from. And then, yeah, we wrote, wrote the film very quickly. Like I think me and my writing partner, Will South, both felt quite connected to the project. And um, we were obviously with the Brothers Trust, plug the brothers trust uh we work with a charity called the mindstep foundation that's run by a lady called tracy davies and she was um she lost her son max when he was 18 to suicide and she's an incredible woman who now um runs the mindstep foundation and uh, i was fortunate enough to be able to speak to her and her daughters and we had multiple meetings and lindsay duncan she had a meeting with tracy and um she informed really every aspect of the film but yeah that's that's sort of the genesis of the idea and how it came to be. So this topic's quite sensitive. Yeah. And I read that you did a lot of research and you got advice from professionals. Mm. Um, did you learn a lot yourself about mental health through this? I, absolutely. I, le I learned a lot about um depression. I mean, I've... um. Been, I've seen a therapist for a very long time so I feel um I feel quite in tune with my own mental health and it's always been something that I've been um is uh pretty well versed on just through my own experience I think that it taught me a lot about um suicide and Re research the, the research I did with Tracy really just listening to her story and listening to Max's story I think that what I wanted to get across or convey with the film is for me personally the scariest the scariest times I've experienced with for example anxiety is when I don't understand why I feel anxious mm. I think that if you can attribute anxiety depression to to a an event or a thing it can feel to a certain extent manageable because you can talk to someone about um someone can rationalize with you i think the times in your life when you are just feeling anxious with no explanation or depressed with no explanation is when it it can feel its darkest and that is what i learned through a lot of my research is that for a lot of people who who unfortunately come to the decision to take their own life I think it does come from a place of um feeling trapped in a void that they can't understand and, and that was um probably my biggest takeaway from the research that I did in preparation for the film it's quite brave of you to you know say that you dealt with mental health issues yourself mm. uh, and that's amazing <laughs> we all go through it um, what would you say helped you? Oh, um, I think, 
I think when I was much younger and started going to therapy, I think that talking to someone is probably the first, uh, the first was the was the first step for me. It doesn't even necessarily have to be to discuss what you're struggling with. I think that having a professional give you advice on steps you can take to um, improve your mental health is important. Things like exercising it, trying to exercise every day. Um, little things like that that can really help. But I think that as young people, we have a responsibility to be as open as we can about our own mental health and in a, in a hope that we can break this stigma that asking for help is um, is a problem because um, I'm very fortunate in that I've always, I've never felt, I've never felt like I couldn't be open about my mental health. And I think that just comes from, you know, being lucky enough to be surrounded by such wonderful, supportive people. And obviously what we, the, the work we do with the Brothers Trust and um, it's, it's not something I've ever felt like I had to shy away from. So, if, you know, if you came up to me in the street and asked me, I would, I would have no problem being open. But um, yeah, I, I don't think, I, for me, it doesn't feel like it comes from a place of bravery. It's more just, it's part of who I am and mm. also in, informed a lot of my work and a lot of it like the, the, the short film is, is a fantastic, is a fantastic example. But, um, you yeah, know, I know Tom's been very open online about his mental health and I think it's amazing because I do think young people look up to someone like Tom and yes. it helps a lot of people. I find it very, um, admirable that you took something that you went through but you you know created something out of it and the fact that it's such a success it's you know the Tribeca Film Festival oh, thank you thank you that, you know that is amazing oh thank you so much no I'm so proud um I'm proud of the incredible group of people that came together to help make the film because short films can be really tricky in a sense because there's not, I self-funded the movie and, and saved up for two or three years to make the film. And you're, you're obviously working on a very small budget and the amount of people, I had lots of friends come in to help, but the amount of people that came to work on the movie because of the, the, the message of the script and the theme and the subject matter was really moving. And it was um, making the film was such a wonderful experience. I think, Everyone had a really nice time. They told me they had a really nice time. They might have just been being <laughs> polite, but um, yeah, no, I'm great. Look, the film is not um, it's not my story. Um, obviously, the, the theme of mental health is one that I feel quite close to. But um, I, 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 you know, I hope the film people that get to see it can can feel seen or heard. Yeah, absolutely. And what was it like directing Tom? It was it was really wonderful because uh, I, there was definitely nerves there. I mean, L Lindsay Duncan as well. It's such a such an incredible actress. I felt I felt incredibly fortunate to have a, a, a such an amazing pair of actors because I think that the film really would not have worked without two people capable of working against one another. Um, what was really nice about working with Tom is I was so stressed making the film that I don't think there could have been a more supportive person to, 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 to take on that role. And there were moments on set where I think I maybe got a little bit stressed and was not being as, as articulate as I should have been. And Tom was able to um, give me advice or calm me down or give me little phrases to, uh, in, in a sense, directing me at times. But um, he very much treated me as he has, as he treats all of his directors, with you know a serious professionalism and it was I was so grateful because um he gives a wonderful performance and really I think him and Lindsay carry the whole the whole film. Amazing. Um well you guys are an incredibly talented family. Uh everybody would know. <laughs> what made you wanna become a director? So when I was a kid I wanted to be a author and a comedian. And I think that was just because that's what my dad did. And I think as a kid, you uh, you look up to your your parents and I was always creative. 
I think on my year six yearbook, it's that's what it says. It says author and comedian. And I used to write lots of short stories. And I was also quite enamored with technology and cameras because mum was a photographer. And I think that it, the, the film industry was at that age, it's certainly not anything on my radar because although I love movies, I think it feels like such a far removed place. And we sort of see it as the bubble of Hollywood. But when Tom did his first film, uh, The Impossible, we were very fortunate as a family to go out to Thailand and we we experienced the film set. And I think just being on that film set made me realise that it, it, I think it made the idea of the film industry feel much closer and less far removed. And, you know, I've been incredibly fortunate with the the help I've received from Tom along the way of the experience I've had over the years of working on different films. Um, but I think once I was on the set, it felt like everything fell into place. And from that age, I think I was probably 11 or 12. It's all I've ever wanted to do. So I, I also feel incredibly grateful that from such a young age, I knew what I wanted to do because going through school, that was always going to be the goal. I always think when you find something that you love, it it's not a chore. No, you... absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And I think that, um, you know, someone asked me the other day, what whose career would you like to emulate as a filmmaker and truthfully I said I would be very 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 happy if I could just if I could spend my life making a living off of being a filmmaker because I think that you know how many people get to say they do their dream job for a living and I think it's a real privilege um so that would be my dream but what, what about you with 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 journalism when did you realize that's what you wanted to do um I I always liked um you know the thought of being in the media. Mm. Years ago I didn't know where I'd be. Yeah. The opportunity came where Deborah offered um a chance for me to interview a celebrity chef. Wow. Uh, it was really good. I really enjoyed it and well, thank God your mum was there <laughs> because she was the one who said, do you want to interview Tom? When that Spider-Man interview uh, got, uh, you know, quite popular online, I just reached out to magazines and yeah. from then I didn't look back. It's amazing. We're always so excited when we see your name on the press list because you always do the best interviews. So when... Um... I got emailed asking to do this. I was thrilled because this is the, feels like, I don't know how many interviews I'll do about the short film, but feels like the perfect place to start. Thank you so much. <laughs> that means it to me. Yeah. Uh, um, so what other kind of films would you love to create? What genres? I know, it, that's such a good question. Truthfully, I feel I'm... I'm, I'm I'm spending this year really studying film because I never went to, to film school. So I'm using this year as an opportunity to watch um, as many films as I can. And truthfully, I, I don't know that I'd be able to give you a genre because every time I watch different genres, I feel inspired to try and make something like um, films that um, I enjoy. But truthfully, I think that the most important thing you can ask of a film is to entertain you. And the intention behind Last Call was I wanted to make something that that would hopefully make people feel emotional because I think for me, anytime I go to the cinema to watch a film, uh, most recently I watched a movie called Close and I've never cried so much watching a film. But I think that if you are moved enough to 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 cry watching a film or laugh or feel scared, then the filmmaker has done their job because that to me is why we go to watch films is to experience emotions. Um, and in the best cases, experience emotions and and think profoundly about what we've watched. Um, and that, that was the intention with the short film, whether it achieved that, I don't know, but um, that was what I was trying to do. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to do all sorts of films and do really well. I would be really happy to do one film and then hope <laughs> to do another one after it. But that's, uh, yeah, I'm writing at the moment. 
or was writing and, and sort of standing in solidarity, standing in solidarity with the writers. So again, using this time during the writer's strike to educate myself and watch as many films as I can. It's also a wonderful time to go back and read some of the classic scripts um, and remind ourselves of, you know, how important writers are. So I've been really enjoying going back and reading the scripts of some of my favourite films. And what are some of your favourites? Oh, do you know what? I'll give you, I could do top five, but it's, seen, it's something that changes so often. But mm. I would say at the moment, oh, I would say Ikaru, which is a Kurosawa film that got made recently into a movie called Living with Bill Nye. I don't know if you've seen it. There's a film called Chunking Express that I absolutely loved and had quite a, um, not an argument with someone the other day, but a heated debate. Uh, <laughs> and then I would say, oh, it's a tough question. 12 Angry Men. Cinema Paradiso, this movie. Oh, okay. What are your What are your favorites? I absolutely love um, La La Land. Such a good movie. Great. It, I've watched it so many times, and it's like it has that you know that Hollywood element, but mm. also realism, and yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's a, he's a wonderful filmmaker. He's mm. an incredible filmmaker. So what is um, up and coming for you? Um, that's a really good question. I think I'm, I, I'm not entirely sure, Myra, to be honest. I'm, when the, the strike is over and everyone gets back to writing, hopefully we'll continue work on a, a few feature films that I'm trying to write. And um, I, don't, I don't want to... I don't want to try and run before I can walk. So I'm I'm looking for advice yeah. at the moment and um really grateful at the reception I've received for the short film and the festivals are wonderful. So yeah, I think hopefully in the next few years the goal would be to try and make a, a feature film, but um just trying to enjoy myself, you know, and I think it's the you know, trying to remind myself of how lucky I am and and uh, make every day as it comes. I think I, I'm someone who finds writing quite difficult, and but I, I certainly enjoy the process. And yeah, I feel very, very um, lucky to be a part of this industry, even in a tiny way. And um, yeah, that, I, I suppose my answer is I don't know. When you heard um, that the last call um, was... Um in the Tribeca Film Festival. Mm. What did you say when you told him? I was, I was, yeah, I was pretty ecstatic because, and funnily enough, because we, when I worked on the crowded room with Tom, we lived in Tribeca and uh, it felt, it felt just quite, and it just felt very full circle because I finished the film, we finished the film in New York, the short film. Um, so I was just thrilled and have had friends that have gone there and said that it's a wonderful festival. But but truthfully, I think just the idea of I'm someone who likes to write goals um, for my for the year. And one of them was to go to a film festival. So the fact that we got to go to such a wonderful festival was lovely and I met some incredible people. And we've got a few more coming up. I hope that I can meet some some fans at the festivals and show them the film. And I'm I'm really I don't like watching my work. It's not something that I particularly enjoy, but I, I, I think that, I suppose that's part of the job, right? You've got to just sort of get used to it. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was pretty, yeah, I was absolutely ecstatic. And what was Tom and Nikki's reaction? Oh, they were absolutely, I don't know that they're as clued in on the festival circuit, but they were <laughs> extremely excited for me. Um, And uh, yeah, I'm, ho I'm really hoping we have, potentially some festivals in the UK soon that I'd love all of, you know, to bring my family to. And um, there are a lot of fun film festivals. It's just wonderful meeting, uh, it's wonderful meeting other young people who have made short films and discussing the sort of problems that arise with trying to do that because it's just a bit of a battle. It's, it's definitely an uphill battle. So um, yeah, it's just really a really great um, energy that is in, it's it's always just a great um atmosphere at the festivals. Yeah. 
you'd have to come to one when we do one in England. Absolutely, definitely. Right. So when you were younger, hmm. did you picture uh, your career to be like this or to start out as like this? I don't think when I was young, I think when I was younger, I didn't know what, that's a really good question. I think when I was younger, I had no idea how you become a director. I still don't really know how you become a director. I did, th these things were just so far off my radar. I mean, I think that, um, I don't know, I think just you're a kid, you have a dream and you just sort of amble along until... You, you try and catch breaks and again as I said earlier I've been so lucky I'm I feel, feel so grateful because I when I left school I was working on you know film sets as a runner running around getting waters and coffees and I got sort of swept up in that world for a few years but had honestly the best time because truthfully I didn't massively enjoy my time at school and then arriving on a film set which I would describe as university for adults where it's an incredibly eclectic group of people with all different skills coming together to service one you know vision and uh yeah just a wonderful experience but yeah no I, I yeah to answer your question no I did not expect this to be the beginning of my career because I don't think I would have known what the beginning of my career would look like I suppose but yeah that's a really good question I have mm. never thought that <laughs> um did you ever go through a period where you were quite frustrated because you were doing something that you don't really want to do? Um, no, I would never. I I don't think it. No, I would never say I was frustrated because I always felt again, in, incredibly lucky to have done the jobs I got to do on on in the industry. Um, because I was always I felt as though I was always learning. So one of the jobs, one of the first jobs I ever did was on Dr. Doolittle, The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle, and my job title was Stuffy Wrangler. And I had to, we would do a scene and I would be in charge with two others, Jack and Harriet, of all of the um, stuffed animals. And I would have to go in after a shot and they'd call it a reference plate and mimic the, uh, I'd have to mimic the actions of the animal. So I'd be holding like a dog, a big stuffed dog. I think Tom might play the dog. And then all of the crew would stand behind the camera and make animal noises um, at us while we were doing it. And although it was painfully embarrassing, I always felt as though it was, um, you know, I was learning. And uh, yes. yeah, so I, that, that was my mindset, has been my mindset for the last few years. And I think, like I said to you earlier, it's not something I'm trying to rush. I, I feel very grateful and I'm enjoying where I'm at and, maybe it's a short film next more likely a short film but maybe it's a feature or maybe it's tv or an advert i'm just um yeah I, I feel i feel um i feel quite content with where i'm at right now yeah what would you say is like a big dream for you that you really want to happen one day that you wanna like manifest wow That's a really good question. I'm trying to think how ambitious I should be. I would be, truthfully, I would be really thrilled to be given the opportunity to make a feature film. And I would be even more thrilled if I got to do it again. Um, mm. And I think that I don't know, because when people ask me, what do you do? I tell them I'm unemployed because I don't feel like a writer and I don't feel like a director. And I don't know when that happens in the trajectory of one's career when you start, because I have friends who are successful writers and directors who say, I still don't feel that way. But I think that if I could make a feature film that is that people like, that gives me the opportunity to do it again and, and maybe presents me with a career, my dream career, that would be for me a, a tremendous success. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. I'm not, I don't, yeah. That that would be my, my answer. Which yeah, I have. Well, Let's, man, I will manifest it. Because Tom's so good at manifesting. Yeah. You're going to do it. I yeah. hope so. Thanks, Myra. <laughs> we'll do an interview, hopefully. Maybe one day for a feature film. 
and you can do it. You can be the first interview again. Oh, absolutely. You know, I better be. Yeah. You're you're going to be the first person I call. Oh, definitely. That would be a, a, a privilege. No, no. Um, so, it's so lovely to speak to you. So, honestly, this has been wonderful. Uh, thank you for your time. And no, no worries at all. Yeah. Um, if, we, if we have any festivals in the UK, I will. you will be the first person to know. And if you want to oh, come, please come along. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that would be wonderful. Definitely, and I can't wait to see your future project. Yeah, I can't wait for you to, us to do this again for the next project. Definitely. Well, Mara, it's been so lovely to speak to you. Let oh, me... For those of you that want to watch the film, because people keep asking me where they can see it, it will be playing at festivals for um the, the, the foreseeable future. So I will, as soon as I know and can announce it, be announcing the festivals. And hopefully I can see some of you there. Yeah. See you at the festivals.